Our family has had a very hard time over the last nine months. Things can change quickly in your life. I'm fine, as I told them. Thoughts about the things that will help me heal make me stronger every day. People all over the world love Kate Middleton more than any other queen. One of them was the late Lady Di. Her stylish, modest clothes and her work to help people all over the world have made her a modern day royal hero. People forget that you're a person with problems and struggles when your life is in the spotlight and you always look happy. Kate has had to deal with some pretty big problems over the years. The famous royal thinks it's time to talk about everything in her life now that the world knows so much about her health. What new things did Kate say? Let's learn everything there is to know about the Princess of Wales. It's all about Kate Middleton and every good story needs an equally interesting start. This is true for Kate Middleton, who was born in Reading, Berkshire, England on January 9, 1982. She was born Catherine, but she quickly changed her name to Kate. She is the oldest of three children. The love story of Kate's parents was just as fulfilling. When they met as flight attendants, they hit it off right away. Soon after, they got married and were ready to start a family. Their first business was selling party items for kids, and Kate was only five years old at the time. They thought it would be a fun way to kill time, but it turned into a multi-million pound business that made the family rich right away. Kate's family had now saved enough money to send her to an expensive boarding school. She went to Marlborough College and was not only a great student but also a great field hockey player. Kate went to the University of St. Andrews in Scotland after high school, which opened in 2001. There she studied art history and met Prince William, who would become her husband. Prince William is the son of Prince Charles and the grandson of Queen Elizabeth II. But the future princess didn't know that at the time. Kate and Prince William became together right away and became dating. But no matter how hard they tried to keep their business a secret, cameras caught them on vacation in Switzerland for two hours and four minutes. People became interested in both their relationship and the woman who had won the prince's heart after this event because they were taken together more and more. Kate finally finished from St. Andrews the next year. After that, she worked for a clothing company and her parents' business for a while. During that whole time, she and William stayed together. After five years in November 2010, they told everyone about their engagement. The royal wedding was just as memorable as you'd think. It happened at Westminster Abbey on April 29, 2011. A lot of people came together to wish the newlyweds a happy life together. They waved with big smiles on their faces. After they got married, Kate became the Duchess of Cambridge. On July 10, 2012, she had a boy whom they named Prince George Alexander Lewis of Cambridge. Kate had a girl named Charlotte Elizabeth Diana on May 2nd, 2015, which was two years after the wedding. And finally, a boy named Louis Arthur Charles joined the family on April 23rd, 2018. Queen Elizabeth II passed away on September 8th, 2022. She was the longest ruling queen in British history. Prince Charles became king in her place. After this, William and Kate were made Duke and Duchess of Cornwall right away. The next day, King Charles made them Prince and Princess of Wales. Given that Kate didn't grow up in a royal family, you might be thinking how easy it was for her to become a princess. To tell you the truth, she handled it like a pro. Kate has always been poised and graceful, which is why she's so well known for it now. The truth is that Kate's family and friends have said it was very easy for her to become a princess. On the outside, maybe not on the inside. It looked like she was born to play that part. A lot of people know Kate for how giving and kind she is. But what did she do that made people compare her to the famous Princess Diana? Giving back. People really liked Kate right away because she was involved in so many good causes, especially those that helped kids. She set up the Center for Early Childhood, which is part of the Royal Foundation, in 2021. In addition, she has spoken out a lot about mental health issues and backed efforts to solve them. Kate, her husband and brother-in-law, Prince Harry, and others got together in 2017 to start the Heads Together project. The goal of the project is to raise knowledge about mental health issues and reduce the shame that comes with them. Kate does a lot of good things for other people, and she's also really into photography. She calls herself a beginner photographer, but she often posts pictures of her family online, and they look pretty good. In January 2020, she started five big questions on the under fives, a major poll that was meant to start a talk about early childhood across the country. But Kate does more good things than that. In October 2023, she and her husband put on an uplifting event called Exploring Our Emotional Worlds, which was put together by the Royal Foundation. The purpose of this forum was to bring together 100 young people who had been chosen by 10 major mental health and youth engagement groups so that people could talk about how young people deal with their feelings and what kind of help they need to get better. The plan builds on a strong base that was set six years ago. 
when the couple and Prince Harry backed the Heads Together movement for mental health. They brought together eight major mental health organizations, such as the Anna Freud National Center for Children and Families and Young Minds, to change the way people in the country talk about mental health. The campaign's goals were to reduce stigma, raise understanding, and give people who are struggling with mental health problems the help they needed. When Heads Together was named the Charity of the Year for the 2017 Virgin Money London Marathon, their work reached more people. This successfully spread their message and raised much-needed funds for their partners. Since then, Kate and William have kept their promise to support mental health through the Royal Foundation. Along with Shout 85258, they've also made other programs, such as the Mentally Healthy Schools program and the Mental Health at Work effort. That people in emotional distress can call for free, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. One thing you should know about Kate is that she really loves doing things outside. Given the link between nature and mental health, she thinks that kids should spend a lot of time in nature for their health and happiness. This will help them for the rest of their lives. Because of this and her love of sports, she always makes sure that her plans include things to do outside. She made a bunch of back to nature gardens for the RHS Chelsea Flower Show and the Hampton Court Palace Garden Festival in 2019. The goal of these gardens was to show how exploring the outdoors can help young children grow and develop and to help people connect with each other. At the end of the project, a permanent back to nature play garden was built at RHS Wisely. She opened it to the public in September 2019. Kate is also a royal patron for a number of sports-related organizations such as Sports Aid and the Rugby Football Union. In addition to focusing on her physical and mental health, she has a deep appreciation for the arts and gives money to a number of well-known arts groups, like the Victoria and Albert Museum and the National Portrait Gallery. Kate has a long history of giving back to the community. She says that what drives her is her desire to make a difference in some important areas where she thinks her help can make a difference. But her charitable work isn't enough to keep her out of trouble. She's been in a lot of bad news stories over the years, some of which are pretty scary. For example, let's go back to 2005 and the time when Prince Harry got into some trouble because of what he wore. Someone somewhere thought it would be cool for him to show up at the Halloween party dressed as a Nazi. People didn't like it, let's just say that. Many people didn't like what Harry did. And it wasn't until years later that he said Kate and William chose the outfit without him. He said that he looked for something he liked by going up and down the rows. But time was running out, so he had to choose between only two things. They were a British pilot's outfit and a sand-colored Nazi uniform with a flat cap and a swastika on the arm. Because he didn't know which to choose, he supposedly called William and Kate and asked them what they thought. They chose the Nazi outfit. He was shocked and scared to see her so upset, but at least it wasn't because of something terrible. On the morning after, Kate showed up with flowers and a card that said she was sorry to make things right between them. Harry also said he didn't think Kate meant to make his fiancée at the time upset, but he thought Kate might have felt like she had to compete with Meghan. As you might expect, those who supported Kate swore she would never do something like that, and instead felt very badly about Meghan. While some thought Kate was to blame, others wanted to hear her own thoughts on the subject. As expected, Kate never came forward to either reject or accept the claims. This leaves the story of who made whom cry a mystery. Back in 2019, Kate was involved in one of the first big scandals, when she and William had been married for eight years. Even though they loved each other, if older partners can have problems, imagine how much worse it must be for younger ones. A lot of people soon started to say that William was having an affair with Rose Hanbury, the Marchioness of Comanly. Rose has been friends with William and Kate for a long time. She even went to their wedding at the funeral of Prince Philip in 2021. Oliver Rose's son would also be one of the pages of honor at Charles' coronation in May 2023. Kate was of course shocked by the news. One person who knew her said that the stories hurt her and that she hated the thought of her kids reading about them online one day. This is what made her and William take a moment to think about their relationship. As a result, they understood that they needed to do more to make sure their family was okay. Despite this, the couple strongly denied the claims and instead chose to stay together as they dealt with the problems that came with being a famous royal pair. The person also said that having a few problems in a marriage was normal, especially after eight years. Because Kate and William are people too, they are the same as everyone else. Unfortunately, their relationship was still strong, even though they were having problems. They were able to get through this bad situation because they love each other and their kids. Three years later though, Kate and William were in trouble again when Harry and Meghan told the world in their shocking 2021 interview that two members of the royal family had asked them what color their son Prince Archie's skin would be before he was born. The couple didn't directly name the people who did it, but that didn't stop reports that it was Kate. In fact, Kate was named as one of these relatives in the 2023 book by royal expert Omid Scobie. 
However, a person said that Kate was not at all one of the people who talked about it, and that she was upset that her name was linked to it when she had nothing to do with it. Now we'll talk about one of Kate's most recent episodes. It's the famous Christmas card edit gone wrong. Seven. Since 2023, William and Kate haven't sent a Christmas card every year. This time, though, there was a little something wrong with it. There was something wrong with the picture right away, as everyone saw. When they looked more closely, they saw that it had been highly edited because it looked like one of Louise's fingers had been cut off and an extra leg had been added. The reason for this is still unknown, but a source said that the royal couple felt very embarrassed by how the crowd reacted. Soon after, everyone started to doubt everything. What could be the reason the prince and princess sent each other a holiday present that was heavily and badly edited? Things would get better in 2024. After Kate had surgery on her stomach in January, the netizens started to wonder where she was again when they remembered that she hadn't been seen in public for a month. Since the royals didn't say anything or even tell her what was wrong, rumors of a plot started to spread. Since a blurry TMZ picture of the princess and a changed family picture came out in March, there have been a lot of rumors about plots. Many news outlets that had the photos on their websites were told to take them down on Mother's Day that year because the source had supposedly hacked them. Kate quickly came out to say she was sorry for any trouble she may have caused. She said she had been playing around with some photo editing software and didn't notice right away how bad and fake the picture looked. Soon after, she put out a statement in which she said that like many amateur shooters, she sometimes tries out editing. In her words, I wanted to say I'm sorry if the family picture we shared yesterday caused any misunderstanding. I hope that everyone who celebrated Mother's Day had a great day. A second source said that Kate's move to speak out was meant to both thank people for their support and put an end to some of those ridiculous conspiracy theories. There's more to Kate Middleton than being a princess. There are a lot of royals, but she has made her own way that makes her stand out. Have you ever thought about why as soon as Late Night walks out in a dress, it's sold out everywhere? The Kate Middleton effect is the name for it. Let's go back to Kate's childhood to get a better sense of what this means. We now know that her childhood in Bucklebury, a village in the commuter belt of Berkshire, shaped most of her life and the decisions she made. Everyone says Kate had a great childhood, and she talks a lot about how she's been raising all three of her kids the same way. Because of this, the family has a babysitter, but they still spend a lot of time with their kids. Kate didn't make friends with girls who were close to the royal family until she started going to Marlborough College. Many people think it wasn't a total accident that Kate decided at the last minute to take a gap year and switch from Edinburgh University to St. Andrews, which put her in the same art history class as William. This idea is still just a guess, and Kate has rejected it many times. But the love story that happened after Kate made her choice would change her life forever. When Kate was in her mid-twenties, she and William broke up. They got back together in time for a royal wedding four years later. When they got engaged, Kate's influence on fashion really began to show. Isa made a blue dress that Kate wore to their engagement photo call that sold out in 24 hours in several countries. Kate was one of the first people to have an effect, but she didn't know it. Newsweek recently said that her work in the fashion business is worth one billion pounds a year. Then came writers like Carly Whitewood, who started blogs that were only about Kate's clothes. She started Kate Middleton Style, a blog and Facebook page, after seeing how popular the bride's sister Pippa became after the royal wedding. Carly began her blog while she was in graduate school getting her master's degree in media and communication. So she did. She said it was just for fun to make a simple page about Pippa and see if anyone visited it. It did happen. If she could figure out what bag Pippa was seen carrying, things quickly got better for her. But she did tell her fans where they could buy the bag. Right after that, Carly's fans begged her to name Kate's clothes instead of Pippa's. For 12 years, Carly has kept track of every outfit Kate has worn. She spends all of her time helping people read through and buy either the real thing or a cheaper copy. Carly says that anything cheap sells out quickly because of Kate's effect. For instance, earrings or even cheaper clothes that look like Kate's. Amazingly, pictures of Kate wearing gowns and tiaras still get the most attention. These are quickly followed by her popular looks, which are clothes that regular people could see themselves wearing like a summer dress and wedges. Kate has been wearing more blazers and business-like outfits lately, these outfits haven't gotten her as much attention, but many people think it's because she wants people to talk about more than just her fashion choices. They want to talk about what she has to say or the cause she's supporting. And it looks like it worked. Some people may still be interested in what she wears, but more and more people are interested in what she has to say. Kate also doesn't seem to be buying as many clothes as she used to. Instead, she recycles most of the things she already has and even wore a rented eco-friendly dress to an event that was earth-friendly. No matter what, Kate's impact on design will never go away. She has been the dress icon of Britain for many years. 
But when Kate Middleton stepped away from the public eye for a while, many millennials missed seeing her clothes every day. Finally giving a shocking reason for this, cancer was found. In January 2024, Kensington Palace said that Kate was going to have surgery on her abdomen and wouldn't be able to do her official tasks for about two months. Because of this, there was a lot of talk about what was going on with Kate and why she was hidden from the public for so long after having surgery on her stomach. In March, when Kate admitted that she had changed the Mother's Day picture of her and her kids, the conversation hit a peak. A lot of people wondered why. Wouldn't it have been easier to just take a picture with her kids instead of going through all that trouble? We learned that she didn't really don't want to take a picture with her kids. She just couldn't do it. Kate told everyone two weeks after the Mother's Day event that she had been told she has cancer and was going through treatment. In January, I had big surgery on my stomach in London, and at the time, it was thought that what I had wasn't cancer. Even though the type of cancer wasn't said, a lot of people thought it might have something to do with the emergency surgery she had on her abdomen earlier. Following that, we didn't see Kate out and about very often. She did, however, show up at the Trooping the Color event in June. Then, in September, she put out a video in which she said she was done with chemotherapy and would be slowly returning to public life. Kate stayed out of the public eye for most of her cancer battle, but she finally came out to write about what it was like to go through chemo in a public statement. In the message that was made public on X, she said that it felt good to be done with her chemotherapy. She also said that taking care of her health and avoiding cancer are now her top priorities. As we all know, life can change at any time, and she said that the last nine months had been very hard for them as a family. And we had to find a way to get through the rough water and unknown roads, no matter what. She said that having cancer is hard, scary, and uncertain for everyone, but especially for those nearest to you. Being humble also makes you see your weaknesses in a way you hadn't thought about before. That gave me a new way to look at everything. The trip also made Kate and William think about and be thankful for the easy but important things in life that many people take for granted, like loving and being loved. She said, my main goal now is to do everything I can to stay cancer free, even though I'm done with chemotherapy. I still have a long way to go before I'm fully recovered, so I have to keep taking each day as it comes. Still, I'm excited to get back to work and do a few more public appearances in the next few months when I can. To wrap up her speech, Kate said that even though a lot had happened, she started this new part of recovery with a renewed sense of hope and gratitude for life. We're so thankful for all the help we've gotten. The people who are helping us right now have given us a lot of strength. The generosity, understanding, and care of everyone has been truly moving. Finally, she sent a word to everyone who is still going through cancer. I will always be with you, hand in hand. Light can come from darkness, so let that light shine bright. She was recently seen in a picture with her husband in a car. The pictures made her look good, and it seemed like her health was really getting better. She was also seen just a few days after it was reported that she was slowly going back to work. She went to a private meeting at Windsor Castle to talk about schooling for young children in the UK. In June, Kate said that hearing she had cancer was a big shock. She also said that she and her husband, Prince William, wanted to keep this a secret for the sake of their young family. She put out a video in which she talked about how long it had taken her to start her treatment after major surgery. The most important thing, she said, was that it took time to explain everything to George, Charlotte, and Louis in a way that was right for them and to convince them that I would be okay. At the same time, the princess told everyone that she is healthy and getting stronger every day. As she goes through treatment and she said she is determined to fully heal. Someone in charge at the palace said in May that the princess would go back to work once her doctors gave her the all clear. They said she needed the space and quiet to get better at the time. You may be interested in what William has said about his wife's health. His comments about it have been pretty light though. He did, however, give a vague report on her health back in May. When a hospital supervisor asked him about her while he was at St. Mary's Community Hospital in the UK, he said she was fine and doing well. Thankfully, the princess is now getting ready for a few events this fall, such as attending Remembrance Sunday and even holding her yearly Christmas carol service. One of her first public performances this year was at Trooping the Color. Since then, she's made two more, one at the Wimbledon Men's Finals and one at church at Balmoral in August. Not just William has talked about what's going on with his wife. King Charles and Queen Camilla, who is Kate's father-in-law, also said something about her cancer news. King Charles, who is also fighting cancer right now, told Catherine that he was so proud of her for being so brave. A representative for Buckingham Palace also said that King Charles and Queen Camilla will continue to love and support the whole family during this tough time. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex also released a statement saying, We wish Kate and her family health and healing and hope they can do so privately and in peace, but Kate's family is known for keeping things very quiet. 
James Middleton, her brother, put up a picture of the two of them as kids on Instagram and wrote, over the years we have climbed many mountains together, we'll climb this one with you as a family too. A rock and a red heart emoji were the last ones he added. The amount of love from people has been really amazing and Kate is still very grateful for it. People would love for her to take as much time as she needs to rest, but they can't deny that they've missed seeing her. We're all excited about the next big thing she plans to do now that she's back in the loop. What do you like most about Kate? Write your answer in the box below. Thanks for seeing. Click play on the movie you want to watch to see more fun ones. Also, don't forget to hit the bell like and follow so you know when a new video comes out.